what do homeless, elderly people, refugees, and physically impaired people have in common? Uh, they're all humans, right? Good. Now, put your business glasses on. Would you employ them? Most of the people wouldn't. I do. Two years ago, I told my parents that I would start a business, that I would become self-employed, that I would have employees, and that these employees would be homeless people. Guess how thrilled they were. Like that. <laughs> I love the idea. You're th over 30. Please, Perrine, get a nine-to-five job. Think about having a family. Think about having babies. Yeah. Please, get a good paycheck. Don't go into that. Of course, they were scared. Don't work with homeless people. Homeless people don't want to work. Oh my God, it's never going to work. And my father, my poor father, he said, oh my God, Perrine, you studied, you had a career, and now you're going to spend your afternoons in a homeless shelter, honestly, dying. No. So yes, they were scared, they were frightened, they were, fear they were feared that I would fail, but actually, now, I can prove them better. I proved them that it works. My name is Perrine, and I'm 33 years old. I'm a social entrepreneur. So for those who are not familiar with that term, a social entrepreneur is a person that uses business economics to tackle a social, cultural, or environmental challenge. Refugees, homeless, elderly people, physically impaired people. They're all a bunch of worthless people. And it's true. It's true because we make them worthless. And that's a pattern. That's a pattern within our society. Think of it. Think of it that we don't focus on their strength. We focus on their weaknesses. And that's a pattern of our society. Think of times when we were in school where we had to learn twice as hard to study those topics that we were actually bad at. And this didn't leave us enough time to actually focus on those topics that we actually enjoyed and that we were passionate about. Think at work when we have our annual performance meetings and then we are told that we have to focus on those areas we're actually very bad about. Now, if we think bigger, that's exactly what we do to our society. We marginalize people because they do not come up to our performance standards. Two years ago, I was at a party, and I spoke to two psychologists, and I asked them, hey, what are today's society's illnesses? Ooh, they came up with a couple of them. But one of them struck me most. It was the term polarization. Life has become so complex that we have to think in boxes, or that we want to think in boxes. So everything is good or bad, black or white, right or wrong. And I just stood there and thought, my God, how sad is that? How sad is it that we don't see, that we don't want to see the complexity of life, all its beauty in all its shades? And that's actually the name also for my company that I founded one and a half years ago, Shades Tours. With Shades Tours, I want us to focus, to have a look at life and all its shades. Yes, it might be difficult, but still they're worth having a look at. So for those who don't know Shadesters, Shadesters is a social business, which means that we focus on financial sustainability and on impact. Shadesters 
what we do is actually that we want people to have a look at the darkest side, at the diversity. And we offer social political education on the topic of homelessness. Yes, we live in Vienna, and Vienna is the most liberal city on earth. And still, like any other big city, we face poverty and homelessness, and that on an everyday schedule. Now, no one ever told us how to react to it. No one ever told us how to deal with it. No one ever taught us how to engage with it. And that's exactly what we want to do. Now, I have employees, I told you already. And of course, who else would I employ to make exactly that job? Homeless people themselves. And that is only possible if I focus on their strength rather than on their weaknesses. And that's a philosophy, and I'm not the only one, that's a philosophy that most social entrepreneurs will share with you. Our society is growing older. So what do, does it mean? Elderly people have not only financial, but also social issues. And this leads them to poverty and isolation. Now we can let it go, or we can act upon it. And for example, Vollpension is actually acting upon it. Where 20 grandmas are doing what they know best, where we share their wisdom, where they share their recipes and the bake cakes. And that is because we cherish their wisdom. And we make their weakness actually their strength. Blind people, yes, they cannot see. But what are they good at? Let's focus on that. They're good with feeling. And that's exactly what they do at Discovering Hands. Where blind women, or visibly impaired women, are being trained to detect early breast cancer stage that not even scanners could see. And this actually provides a really high recovery rate. 2015, a lot of refugees crossed the border and entered Austria. And we were challenged. We were challenged to integrate them. I would like to present you Magda's Hotel, where refugees welcome guests. And yes, the refugees might not directly speak our language, a weakness. But what are they good at? Especially those refugees that we got that came here in Vienna, to Vienna in 2015, come from the Orient, from the Middle East. And what are these cultures known for? For warm-hearted, they're warm-hearted, they're welcoming. So that's exactly what the asset, their asset is to welcome guests at the hotel. So what do all four of these companies have in common? One, they offer a market-based solution, which means that they focus on the quality of the product by focusing on the strength of their employees. They don't depend on donations. They all have a financial plan behind it. They do not show caste poverty, but they work with the strength. Their employees are powerful. And now I would like to talk to you about the challenges the social entrepreneurs face. Because whenever we are perceived somewhere, we are regarded as the cute ones. And what I see when I talk to a social entrepreneur throughout the world, they are to me, they are superheroes. They touch me, they inspire me. And the reason for it is that I know that they have to overgo every single challenge like any other startup. Yes, they have marketing, sales, PR to do. But in addition, they have the social and emotional component that they have to deal with. For you a little bit to understand it, let me give you a little example from my life. So last year when I started working with homeless people, do you think that that is always easy? No. The first year, I was in constant pain. I went to bed, crunched my stomach, and wondering what is going to go wrong tomorrow. Are they going to show up? Are they going to be motivated? 
are they going to call me at 8 o'clock in the morning to tell me that they have been attacked either in a shelter or outside? And that they are now actually in the hospital telling me that I can't make it to work today. We are seen as acute ones because we have the reputation of being tree huggers. And although what we actually do is that we make society think and engage, want to engage them. We are not the techies. We are not those who create an app which can scale overnight and raise thousands and millions of dollars. We are not. And that makes us look weak. That we are not a very sexy investment opportunity. And that is because society looks at as us and looks at our weakness. Because yes, indeed, the financial return on investment is our weakness. And then I wonder how sad is that too? How sad is it that we, they don't look at our strength? That they don't look at our social in return on impact, return on impact. And this is a pressing matter. The issue is that it is actually social entrepreneurship is not a trend. It's not something that's going to happen in 20 years. It's something that is happening now. And it's happening now because look, look at the upcoming generations, the millenniums, the purpose-driven ones. There are going to be much more social entrepreneurs rising up. And all of them will have the same issues. The same issue, namely that they won't be able to get any investment. My call to action for you. Have a look at your strength. Have a look at how you want to use your resources. Do you want to volunteer? Do you want to engage? Do you want to become a social entrepreneur? Do you want to become an impact investor even? Or do you perhaps just want to go to your bank and talk to the manager and say, you know what, I'll be interested in having a look at the social impact investment possibilities. Because you can create the demand for it. It might change actually how business is done today. So in that sense, Please, use your strength and enlighten, engage. Not only today, but for the rest of your lives. Thank you.